The day before NHL free agency, Anaheim Ducks GM Pat Verbeek said this. What are the Anaheim Ducks looking to do in free agency? Well, we're, what we're looking to do and what's going to really happen are two different things. <laughs> so what I'd like to be able to do is, is that a, uh, top six forward and a top four defenseman. That's the goal. With a wry smirk and a chuckle, it looked like he was about to make some big moves, like he had the first day of free agency the previous two years. However, his words would have new meaning as the next day, the Ducks were the only team not to sign any new players on day one. To add insult to injury, former Ducks head coach Bruce Boudreaux said this. Even San Jose, good moves or bad moves, they're making moves. Chicago's making moves to try to improve their team. What has Anaheim done? They're sitting there. They're hoping their young guys are going to be okay, but their fan base is not... Five million strong like Toronto. It's very limited. You got to start putting a good team in Anaheim. And I don't know if uh, Pat Verbeek has done that right now. Not a great look on the outside. While disappointing, like really disappointing, most of the contracts signed on day one are going to age poorly. And it's not like the Ducks weren't in on the big names. Reports are the Ducks made big offers to both Steven Stankos and Jonathan Marcheseau but were turned down for any number of reasons, including years offered, California taxes, or the fact that we have sucked the last six years. With all the real big names off the board, Verbeek's only option is now to acquire the top six winger and top four defenseman via trade. He has some major work to do, but he has made some smaller deals so far. So let's recap them all, starting with the RFAs. Isaac Lunderstrom is back on a one-year $1.5 million deal. A great deal. It was under his qualifying offer. Funny enough, this was actually announced while Verbeek was on stage at the flock party. Defensively, Lundy is a monster. Let's see if new linemates can help him find some offense. Earl Vakaninen and Brent Leeson are also back on one-year deals. Both cheap and serviceable deals that will be nice to keep around for depth. The Ducks also qualified Jackson Lacombe, Nikita Nesterenko, and Pavel Regenda. Regenda, the agenda, has since been re-signed to a one-way, two-way deal. That means Brayden Tracy, Blake McLaughlin, Bo Grew, Gustav Lindstrom, and Max Jones were not tendered a qualifying offer. The most surprising is Jones. He never could find his groove with all his injuries. He will be missed, not so much on the ice, but he was great in the locker room and was great to fans. Wish him nothing but the best in Boston. It seems like it could be a perfect fit. Now we get to the two free agents for Beak has signed. 27-year-old left-handed centerman Jansen Harkins and 26-year-old right-winger Carson Myers. Harkin signs a two-year, $1.575 million deal. The man who injured Drysdale when he got to Philly is now a duck. Trevor Zegras, you better watch out. In all seriousness, it wasn't a dirty hit. Looking at Harkin's stats this past season, you wonder if he's even better than Bo Grew. But at least he has scored a goal a few times in years past. He will be nothing more than a fourth-liner. So we traded for Ben Myers' last trade deadline, and now we have lost him, but hey, we acquired a new Myers. Carson Myers signs a one-year, two-way deal. So it looks like just an AHL signing. Apparently, he has dealt with a lot of health issues to even make the NHL, including a 25-inch tapeworm living in his gut. So his points aren't the full story. We'll see what he can do. Verbeek also made two trades, starting with Brian Dumoulin, who the Ducks acquired for a fourth-round pick from the Kraken. Nicknamed Dumo, is a 32-year-old left-handed defenseman who has one year at $3.15 million remaining on his contract. A solid deal, low risk, high reward. The salary is a bit of an overpay, but it doesn't matter that much. We are trying to get to the cap floor. He is huge and a very strong defensive stay-at-home defenseman. I don't remember where I saw it, but I believed he played a majority on the right side for the Kraken. He won back-to-back Stanley Cups with the Pens in 2016 and 2017. So more veteran leadership. I wouldn't be shocked if he is a trade chip come trade deadline day next season. The next trade, we acquired Robbie Fabry and a conditional 2025 fourth round pick from the Detroit Red Wings in exchange for Gage Alexander. With this move, the Ducks were officially over the cap floor with his $4 million cap hit for one more season. Fabry is a 28-year-old left-handed centerman who was a former first round pick and won a Stanley Cup in 2019 with the Blues. Verbeek said, Robbie is a grit and sandpaper type of player that plays with energy and fits with what we're trying to do. He also possesses a nice combination of skill and scoring ability that we need. To be honest, 
Fabry doesn't seem like a Verbeek type of player. He is 5'11 and not the best defensively, but his career high in goals last season with 18 would be tied for fourth on the Ducks. Gage Alexander was a fifth round pick and has had a sub 900 save percentage in both the AHL and the ECHL the last few years. I said during the first live stream of development camp, his days were numbered. He was at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to Ducks goalie prospects. If Fabry can stay healthy, which he hasn't done much of his career, he's torn his ACL three times, once in his left and twice in his right knee. If healthy, this could end up being an amazing trade. As it stands, though, this is a good trade. We got a fourth runner back that we lost in the Dumoulin trade, and you include that Gage Alexander was a fifth round pick who is never going to make the NHL. It's already a good deal. Fabry is the unknown, and regardless, his contract gets us to the cap floor. Actually, the more and more I'm watching highlights of Fabry, I really like him. I still don't know how good defensively he is, and surprisingly, he is really small, but he can take a hit and give them. And that's it. That's all Verbeek has done. He did so little, it actually might be hard to find news on it. But I just wanted to give a brief shout out to our new partner, Sports Spider. Guys, if you're tired of searching multiple websites for sports news, sportspider.com has you covered. They collect the latest articles, videos, and podcasts from around the web and organize them by your favorite teams. If you want to stay as updated as possible on our Anaheim Ducks, hit the link in the description down below and check out sportspider.com. It really helps out the channel. So even if there is little news, you can still find it. What I'm learning so far is that Verbeek does good work when it comes to trades. He seems to struggle when it comes to signing contracts, like taking forever to sign RFAs or letting them walk for nothing or overpaying veterans, which I get he has to do right now because we suck. And that still doesn't work, as we can see by Stamkos and Marcheseau not signing with us. As it stands right now, the Ducks haven't really improved. They will by nature, of course, as hopefully the young kids take a step next year. I feel like I've heard that before, but free agency wise, everyone is a fourth liner or a bottom pair defenseman. We are going to have quite a battle for the fourth line next year. Lundestrom, McGinn, Fabry, Johnston, Leeson, Colangelo, Harkins, Nestorinko, Regenda. And to be honest, if any of these players are on the third line next year, we're not going to have a successful season. So Verbeek better do something. On a happier note, he did also sign our two first round picks in this year's draft to their three year entry level deals. Beckett Seneca and Stian Solberg look great at Dev Camp. My next video will dive deeper into them and all the other prospects that attended. But if you want to watch for yourself, all live streams have been edited to remove the waiting parts for the most part. It was like four hours every day, so it's not perfect. Thank you to all our members. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and go Ducks! Screw there, I was trying to get in there like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs>